there aren't too many clues about what lies ahead of you, or more specifically above you, as you turn off the D1091 main road in the town of Roshitai and head into the heart of the Alps on the D526. To begin with in fact, the road seems much like any other you'd come across in the southeast of France. But as you pass through the sleepy hamlet of Alamont across the La Romanche River and head up towards the Lac du Vernay, the road and the scenery that surrounds it begins to change. Gradually, just about all signs of habitation start to disappear. And once you pass through the historical village of Rivier d'Alamont, you become aware that you're already a long way up above sea level, where the air is thinner, the mountains taller, the landscapes more imposing than you might ever imagine. And at that point, the D526 really begins to reveal its fangs. In any car, it becomes a beguiling but also challenging road on which to drive. But with the hood down and the sun shining, it's as close to motoring perfection as you're ever likely to get. And the further up the D526 you go, the better it gets. After around 20 kilometers on the D526, heading northeast, you come across the Lac de Grand Maison, which happens to be one of France's biggest hydroelectric power stations. And at that point, the road changes yet again, not just in character, but in name as well because it becomes the D926 at the end of the lake. This is one of the best roads I have ever driven an automobile on. It is absolutely incredible. It's got everything. It's not until you round the headland at the top of the lake that the full glory of the D926 reveals itself there. But when it does, and you see the road meandering its way up the valley towards its peak at over 2,000 metres, it feels a bit like you've reached the road to heaven. And at the very top, where the Col du Glandon meets the Col de la Croix de Fer, the views across the Alps are almost of another world on a bright sunny day. Dean's 526, 926 and 927 are all within one hour of the city of Grenoble. The towns of font Couverte, La Toussière and Saint-Jean-de-Morin are also close by to the northeast. This bit of the road is, as you can see, much, much tighter and twistier. It's, it's a lot more like a kind of classic mountain pass because you just get kind of hairpin after hairpin after hairpin but it's still absolutely sensational to drive on because you, you don't just get straight line hairpin straight line hairpin there are lots of kind of fluid bits in between the 2015 tour de france used these roads for one of its most gruesome stages known officially as stage 19. even in a car the col de glandon is a challenge so quite what it must be like on a bicycle is impossible to imagine. So up here we have the yellow jersey, obviously won and maintained this year by Mr. Christopher Froome, just over there, as you can see. And then you come up over this piece of the valley and then you just look down into it. And the sight that greets you is quite beautiful. But there's also a poignant sense of history to the mountains that surround these incredible roads, and you can almost feel it in the air. During the First World War, many soldiers from these parts sadly lost their lives. And in the Second World War, the area was home to some of the bravest, most resilient fighting of the French resistance, who simply refused to be defeated. And this memorial in the village of Le Rivier d'Alamont is testimony to their gallant actions. 
The French may have got a bit fed up of the British winning their beloved Tour de France cycle race, the most gruelling chapters of which take place right here among the Alps, but the rest of us will never tire of these incredible roads. The D526 and the D926 that it becomes, alongside the D927 that meets it right at the very top, is one of the most stunning roads in Europe, if not the world. For any car enthusiast, it's a must. And for me, it might even be the best yet. <laughs>